was followed up on Wednesday with a crucial victory at Tyne Castle. Behind for most of that game, a late strike by a man who spent most of the season on the bench, Andy Walker, showed that Celtic mean business and he can still do a job for them. He's been talking to David Tanner about a great season for his club, but a frustrating one for him. Andy Walker has done this 11 times this season, come off the bench. Since the signing of Tom and Van Hooydonk, he's been on the sidelines. He's also holding the title right now, no striker once, leading goal scorer in the reserves. There's really not much you can do when the guys in possession are playing so well, but uh, reserve games really just try and keep your eye in, keep your fitness level up, but playing 45 minutes the other night in the first team is probably similar to playing 90 minutes in the reserves. Everything has to be much more tighter, your control, your concentration, so uh, it was good to be a part of it. Before his late winner against Hearts, he took some abuse from the terracing over this miss. He's not worried, though, about any criticism. He says he won't hide. But I'm just looking to help my teammates out, make myself available for a pass, and try and help them in whatever they're doing. And uh, if the ball can get into the box quickly, then I would be confident of getting the on, on the end of one or two chances. Make no mistake, for Celtic to take three points west along the M8 on Wednesday was a great feat. Hearts played this game like a cup tie, and it wasn't a surprise when John Robertson gave them the lead just before the break. Only 14 minutes to go, and at last Celtic pull level, Van Hoyadon gets goal number 17 of the season. And shortly after that, the big Dutchman sets up Andy Walker for his winner. And they seem quite chuffed. Walker came on at half-time as a sub for the injured Andreas Tom, who misses out this afternoon. Tommy Burns says he'll play the men in form, so does Andy think that he can now keep the German out of the team? Well, that's the way it could work, you're right. Um, I think if you're in possession of the jersey and you're playing well, then there's no reason to change things. And uh, there's one or two players that have found it difficult to get back in after having been injured or suspended or whatever. So, uh, yep, it's a chance for me, and uh, I'll just be looking to play my normal game, and hopefully things will uh, go my way. Wednesday's win came at the back of Sunday's exclusive Scott Sports Big Match Live. The same script, with only the names changed. And now the corner is swung in, the testing moment. Oh, and he's missed it, and Dodds has scored. Showing great pace here, flipping it back, it's Van Hoydonk! What a fabulous goal by Pierre Van Hoydonk! Eight years ago, eight long years ago for Celtic, Walker blasted 16 goals in the last championship winning team from Parkhead. He reckons this year Rangers are again beatable. We've got them in our sights, we're only two points behind. Um, to be fair to them, they're scoring goals as well, uh, winning all their games. So. Uh, it's certainly nail baiting stuff. Amazingly, since Tommy Burns swapped clubs, Celtic have only scored once at Rugby Park, with Walker doing the damage last March. If after today's game there, a run in the first team doesn't materialise, would he consider leaving Parkhead? It's not something I'm thinking of at the moment, um, but uh, if that was to, if that situation was to arrive, I would. I would consider it like any other option. I had the chance to go to the United earlier and I didn't feel as though that was right. So I'll continue to give my best for Celtic as long as I'm here. Andy Walker, well Celtic will be trying to keep up the pressure on Rangers when they play Kilmarnock here at Rugby Park this afternoon.